thanks for joining me again on my channel. Um, today I'm going to give you a little anatomy lesson on the orchid flower. And I'm making this video because I must admit that until about a year ago, I didn't really know what made orchid flowers so special. Which sounds a bit silly, but orchids do come in a vast array of families, growing patterns, flower appearances, and I just came to wonder what actually makes an orchid an orchid and I was a little bit embarrassed that I didn't know. So today we're going to discuss the general structure of the orchid flower and what makes them so unique. I guess to grow orchids you don't really need this information, it's just something I find very interesting. Um, but you know if you want to raise your orchid addiction to a new level and start pollinating orchid flowers, which many people do, you do need to know the anatomy. Um, but at the end of this video, we'll try and have a play and dissect an orchid flower and see what we can find. So um, I've come to discover that there's two main, very unique traits that orchid flowers possess that differentiates them from other flowers in the plant world. Um, the first is that they possess a lip or a labellum, which is actually a modified petal. It's usually the most striking and colorful part of the flower, and it's evolved to serve as kind of a landing strip for insects that pollinate them. The second trait is that other flowers have separate male and female parts. The pollen is contained on a number of stamen, holding the anther, which contains loose and powdery pollen. They also have a single female part known as the pistil, which has a sticky stigmatic surface where pollen germinates, and then that is attached to an ovary via something called a style. Orchid flowers, however, have a single structure known as a column that contains both male and female parts. Um, and we'll talk about them in a bit more detail later, um, but there are a few slight variations to this rule and some flowers in general are unisexual which means that the flowers are either male or female for example say plants that you know produce fruits or in the orchid world catacetums and we're not going to talk about those things today because one I've never actually flowered any catacetums um, but also it's really not the topic of today's conversation so all orchid flowers do have a basic structure um, but orchid flowers are extremely diverse and different genera have different morphological variations of these basic structures. And that is often actually what differentiates one species from another. But let's take a look at this Phalaenopsis flower and you'll see that it has three outer structures and three inner structures. The outer petal like structures are known as sepals and there are three of them. There's a dorsal sepal at the top, and in anatomy, the dorsum or the dorsal aspect is the back of something. So, for example, this is the dorsum of my hand, or if you refer to the back fin of a fish, that's the dorsal fin. So, maybe just think of the dorsal fin of a dolphin, and you'll remember that this is the dorsal sepal. Then there's two lateral sepals, lateral meaning to the sides. And the sepals are actually what form the protective sheath of the flower buds as they're developing. In non-orchid flowers, they appear a lot more like leaves and they're green. I'll just show you this Paphiopetalum because interestingly, it has one of those morphological variations that I was talking about before, but Paphiopetalum flowers only have two sepals and that's because their lateral sepals are fused together. Okay, and you can also see on this Phalaenopsis then three inner petals and the lowest petal is very different to the others. So it's usually quite flat and large and attractive and this is the lip or labellum and it's been modified to attract and allow the landing of pollinators. Orchid flowers are actually usually orientated in what's known as a resupinate position, which is this orientation. So supine means on your back. So actually as the flowers develop, they turn upside down and the lip, which was actually growing on the upper part of the flower, twists and then the flower is 
upside down technically and it allows the lip to sit at the bottom. There are also um, non-resupinate flowers like this epidendrum which never turn from its original position. Um, this poor epidendrum was knocked over by heavy wind recently and I lost the newest spike of flowers which is quite the tragedy but at least it gets a guest appearance in this video. Um, right in the center of the flower you'll see the column and it's covered at the top by an anther cap. You can see in this Bellara flower that it's lost its cap at some stage and you can see the pollinia just hanging there. The throat of the flower is the hollow part under the column and above the lip. It too is often coloured or patterned quite attractively to lure pollinators. Sometimes right at the back of the throat there exists a spur or a nectary and these can vary significantly in length and I'll put up a picture of an angricum orchid um, which have very very long spurs which have evolved with time to accommodate a very specific moth with a very long tongue or proboscis. The entire flower is then attached to the ovary which has ovules in it so the pollen uh, can fertilize those ovules and the ovary will then swell to produce a seed pod. Okay so let's have some fun and dissect this orchid flower. We'll use this Bellara because it's expired and this is the lip here which will remove which exposes the entire column so you can see the shiny surface in the middle there is the stigmatic surface and up the top is the anther cap which we're going to remove now so you can see under the anther cap is that waxy yellow pollinia um, and it's attached to my finger there that's is pretty sticky um, but we'll get another flower and have a look so this one has had its anther cap removed for a while and we'll try and get it to stick so there's a sticky pad attached to the pollinia called the vasidium and that's what attaches to the pollinators back this one's been exposed for a little bit so it's not as sticky um, but once we pick it up we can have a really good look but it's pretty cool it's got the two pollinia there and um, the whole thing just attaches onto the pollinator and it goes to the next flower and that pollinia then sticks to the stigmatic surface and you have pollination I've never pollinated an orchid flower before so we won't start today with this video I'll just wrap things up here okay everyone well thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos subscribe to my channel I'll see you guys next time